Aniel, how's it going? Very good, man. Nice to be here. Did uh, did I say your name right? Ah, uh, yeah, pretty pretty good. It's Aniel Serasol says. Sarasol it's pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you you speak English a lot better than I speak Spanish. So, <laughs> uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? How'd you get into kayaking? Just kind of introduce yourself to the viewers um, who who may not know who you are or anything about you. Yeah, so I was born here in Spain in a in a place pretty close to Barcelona and I'm 25 years old, been kayaking since I was 13 and in this last few years I've been starting to get a lot into traveling and you know trying to get the best out of the best years of my life. Well, it seems like you're doing a pretty good job. Um at this point um you you recently underwent some uh, uh, shoulder surgery. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so it is the second time that happens to me. It's called um, AC joint separation, and it's the acromion bone, um, a little higher up than your collarbone. And this second time, I just broke it completely on on that uh, that slide, Sunset Falls in Washington. I flipped halfway, going really fast, and just hit the bottom of the uh, of the river and just completely destroyed it. And I took a month off, started to feel pretty good. So I went back to kayaking. I did all the California season and sticking, all that. I did sick line, but I also did Pakistan. But uh, by this time, it was feeling so bad, man, that I had no power on the arm and just painful all the time. So I just did surgery. They took a ligament out of my knee and they put it up there on my on my shoulder. They are, they also put some a little piece of metal and some other stuff. So it's a really invasive surgery. So I'm feeling pretty fucked up right now. But uh, <laughs> hopefully in the next month or two, I start to feel better and get back at it. Yeah, man. I saw a picture of it. It looked like I mean it, you you were obviously compensating in a big way for it and. And to know that that was going on and you were winning sick line and doing everything up at the Stikine and just all your travels, what what was causing it to, to look like that? Well, you know, your your shoulder, you got a nice ligament, all good, strong. Me, I had nothing left. It overextended, almost ripped the whole ligament. So you could see like the shoulder's was like down you know you could just see the the bone sticking up and it just looked really weird so the whole body had to compensate and you know the pain wasn't that bad it was mostly that uh if i wanted to do a sprint or go fast or push hard the shoulder would just get so tired so quick that i had no power and that really pissed me off <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i did surgery because in the long run i think it's gonna be the right call Wow. So you so you took the sick line crown with basically one arm. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that bad. But you know, one minute race is not that bad. But uh, two minutes, three minutes, yeah, that that just kills me. So we've talked about the sick line. Did you, did you have a chance to hear that episode where we got into yeah. <laughs> boats and whatnot? What do, do you have an opinion on our on that topic? Yeah, I thought it was really funny, the, the whole conversations that was going on with the brav and carbon seeds and all that. But, uh, you know, just to clarify, um, Sam didn't have any carbon seed or food rest. And um, I did have that food rest. But in the end, I don't think it matters because what matters is the total weight of the boat. And we were still higher than, you know, Jackson or Piranha. They had lighter boats than us. So I don't think we had an advantage. But um, about the, um, you know, not legalizing the brap, yeah, I, I don't necessarily agree. I've seen Benny and Pat running anything with that boat. So I think, of course, you can run the sick line course with that in a safe way. But it's just their rules. They're really strict up there. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I accept them, but I don't think it's necessarily good but i don't think that's what's killing the progression you know not allowing the the brad boat what it's killing the progression on that race is that they make us race every year with super low water flow so we can never get better times or just push the sport because the race is easier every year and just slower and more manky 
I would just do it earlier in the year, you know, maybe keep changing the course. But um, I think it's it's a good race for the sport, you know, like the best people go there and it's really hard to win. Like if you ever go there, you'll see that it's really competitive. Like I barely make it into into the semifinals and many people don't make it. So it's a hard race and it pushes the sport, but it could push it in a better way if a few things change, you know. So tell me about that river. Now, now I have been there, but uh, to our viewers, what, what are the other possible sections in that valley? Um, I don't know in that valley if there's that many options, but, uh, you know, it's not that easy to find another section, you know, because, yeah, yeah. you know, it needs to be sort of road access. You need to have control over the water. And uh, there's a few things. So if you start thinking seriously about changing the course, I don't think it's that easy to find another place, but for sure there are other places. But um, yeah, you would need to think about it for a bit. I just think that it to move the sport forward, it needs to be more like, you know, you call it the Extreme World Championship, then God damn it, make it on a hard <laughs> race course, you know? No, I hear you there. Well, you know, I, I personally, it's my opinion is very similar to yours. I, it's Olaf's race, and if he wants to... You know, he gets to decide in the end what he feels is a safe boat or isn't a safe boat. I don't even think that it's Olaf's race. I think it's maybe not even Adidas. You know, it's these Planet Tall guys that uh, they organize it. They do the whole thing. I don't think they are necessarily kayakers. And, I mean, they, they need to be to have it safe. You know, they cannot mm -hmm. have a problem mm -hmm. there. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it's Olaf's race at all. Who are these guys? Um... You know, I think they are subcontracted by Adidas. So Adidas puts puts the name and the money, I think, and then the other guys run it. But who, uh, who are they? What's their name? Um, it's this guy called Mike and his his wife and more people. I I don't know that well exactly. Interesting. I had no idea about that. Yeah, everybody gives shit to Olaf, and I don't think Olaf has anything <laughs> to do with it. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I have to, I'll have to take that back. <laughs> um, moving on, tell me a little bit about, uh, tell me a little bit about your exploits up at the Stikine. Mm, the Stikine, huh? good river. Um, I think this season we, we went up there um, for two weeks. Maybe we spent 13 days. And uh, yeah, we did it a lot of times. I think we ended up, doing it seven day, seven times, so 13 days in a row, nice. and really good season, the level stayed super steady, I think that once again we went there too late, we are going up to the sticky too late, so every year we get it from 400 to lower instead of, you know, getting a high level, but uh, we had good times, we never ported anything this year, so every lab was scary, and we were pushing it. Um, it went good all the way, but the last one wasn't that good. <laughs> so, so before we get into what happened on the last one, was it uh, did, was it just you and Benny? Were there were there other people that you were jumping in with and groups? So I drove alone, and at the time I was like, okay, there's nobody here, so I'm just gonna have to do a. Solo lap, but at the pudding, I found um, Nate Kleeman and Sam Grafton. So I mm -hmm. got to do a first lap with them. And then Benny showed up, and we did four laps together. And then some other people came, but it was a pretty chill year. Not not that many people. People came late, and it was mostly just me and Benny. And it was really good, actually. Just two persons. And, yeah. And you guys had around 400 cumics in there. And, and the weather... The weather looked, I mean, it, I was following the forecast. It looked really warm for that yeah. area. Yeah, definitely a really good summer. So tell me about this last lap. What happened? So, yeah, just uh, it was another normal lap, not that much water. And uh, we decided to change boats with Benny that day. So he took the, the new Waka, I went back to the old one. And, uh, you know, that rapid pass or fail. Oh, yeah. There's the main line where you just avoid this tight crack on the left that it's called fail. And this year you definitely had to do that because there was a lock. 
on the fail line that if you went in there, you would get stuck and it looked terrible. So instead of going for the main line, we were doing this right sneak line by the end. And, you know, it's just a really simple line. You just had to move over a hole and avoid it on the right. And, you know, something so simple that I never thought about it. And I just went for it boofed did a big boof and when i landed i just got s squirted back you know my it grabbed my tail and i was in the hole and since it was pretty low water the holes were not big but that hole was perfect that they just really closed in and i i fight it tried to get out for a minute or two not that long but you know just tried and tried and i wasn't getting out so i i had to swim you know and I pull out my skirt and almost reach the right eddy swimming, but I didn't make it. So I just started floating down, trying to reach the left eddy. And eventually I made it and managed to keep my dry back with me. And, you know, Benny came to me and we, we were discussing what to do. My boat was still up there, just bouncing around on the hole. Right. And right. So r real quick. So... There is kind of, um, I'm just going to kind of um, describe the rapid. So you yeah. come down at Pass or Fail, and there's the main tongue of water, and there's a big rock that if you're running the main line, you go just to the left of it, and then you work right. And then there's kind of like a, kind of some, I don't know, slab rocks in the middle to the right of that, and you were running a slot even to the right of that, correct? Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right, I got you. All right, so go on. So, yeah, I was on an eddy down there. I got myself out of the water and just waiting for the boat to come down. And eventually it came down. So Benny just chased it down, down to Wasson's. And uh, he almost got it before Wasson's. And I was just praying that he would get it. But it just flashed down. And I could see him that oh. he said, I'm, I'm going to chase it. So he just left me there by myself. And... I guess he, he thought I was going to walk to whatever he was, but, man, the the walk looks so bad. You definitely could have walked maybe up some ridges and spent hours and hours walking down to Site Z maybe, but it just looked terrible, and it was late in the day. That day we put on a tour or something. So, so were you I on know. river right or river left? I was on river left. Okay, so you'd have had to cross the river somewhere to get to Site Z. Definitely, yeah. Okay, go on. So, yeah, there I was by myself, and I I had my watershed, you know, so I had a big one. So I just filled that thing up with air and decided to swim the whole way down to whatever Benny was. I knew exactly what rapid was coming all the time. I, I'd done it six times by that time this year, so I, I knew exactly that, you know, if I managed to stay in the middle of the flow – don't fuck up with the eddies, I'd probably make it, you know, just, <laughs> it, it was really, really scary having to come to do that. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done just because, man, it's so scary because even if there's somebody, yeah, maybe it's not that scary, but just doing it by yourself, you know, that if you get stuck in just one single eddy, not even a bad one, you're just not going to swim out of there. Uh -huh. So, Yeah. I had to go for Wassons, you know how boily the entrance is in there, and the the watershed just did all the work because every time that I got pulled down, I would just let myself go down, but the watershed would go up, so I wasn't spending any energy, I wasn't swimming, I was just floating down and just keeping it in control, breathing a lot, doing all the apnea exercises, and yeah, oh I my God. crashed the line on Wassons, I, I had a good line. <laughs> And just did a few more rapids and about uh, almost a K down or something. I, I saw Benny, so I knew I was safe. And he had the boat. We had a breakdown. So we just went to Site Z and kept going all the way to Wolf Track that day. It was insane. Oh, my God. So you got back in after that, breakdown and all. No yeah. port sands portages and went all the way to Wolf Track. Yeah, that was Benny's fault because... I was ready to chill, but he was like, oh, we should go to <laughs> the track, so we just went. <laughs> uh, well, let me just paint the scene for people who haven't been there. So basically right above Wassons, it's fully walled out, and there's literally no beaches. I mean, it's walls down to 
down to the river, surging, a lot of boils, a lot of eddy lines, a lot of things that want to go deep, I'm sure, as you know. Yeah. And then you go through a couple of rapids, and then on the right and the left, there's one pool. And that one pool, there are some very small beaches on the left and the right, and then it makes a hard right bend, and you're pretty much in the straightaway to Site Z. So is that is that where your boat was at on, on one of those two little beaches? No, I didn't have to do all the last last rapids. I just had to do Wassons and you know maybe a K the most. But uh, I managed to get out and get the boat back before the scary scary ones before side set. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. like. Whew, well, that is something <laughs> to hear. Oh, my God. Yeah, some survival stuff right there that day. Yeah. So what, so did you have are, do you have a swimming background or how did you – were you just thinking, like yeah. just visualizing everything before you went in to control your breathing? How did you uh, wrap your head around what you were getting ready to do? Yeah, so before I did kayaking, I uh, I used to play water polo. You know that sport? It's like football but oh, in yeah. a swimming pool. Oh, yeah. And so did my brother. That's our background. So we, we are good swimmers. But still, man, without that dry back, you just go deep all the time. So you don't get to breathe. But with the dry back, it's just like doing hydro speed, you know, or <laughs> it gives you that support that you need to, to stay floating and getting all those breaths that, that matter. And I also with Red Bull this last year, we did a apnea course and uh, they do it with big wave surfers and all that. And it it's not like I can hold on my, my breath for that much longer, but I I know how to chill way more now, to stay more relaxed on situations like that, and it, it really helps. Well, man, that is a, that's an incredible story. I mean, you know you know how it is. I mean, you, you train, you work hard, you, 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 you're ready for everything that happens, but when you're pushing it in whitewater, things yeah. happen, and you have to deal with them, and you, you dealt with them. Wow. Definitely. Oh, that's a good one. Well, give us one more. What, what, you were telling me something a little earlier before we started recording about a Blue Angel mission. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it seems like all the stories are bad ones, but uh, <laughs> we keep on surviving so far. Um, this one, it's not only my story. It was um, with six, five other friends. It was in Mexico on the Rio Jalacingo. Mm -hmm. And at the time, none of us had done it. And we were young, you know not that smart and just happened to do to be doing the lower Halasingo and didn't get any better on it. And we got to this one place, banana fields on the sides. It didn't look like it was going to drop that much. And, you know, all my friends just rallied into it. Um, I could see my friend Lucky, Jules Domin was there, my late friend Juanito, uh, Tino Spech, and another guy called Daniel from Peru. And, you know, I just saw them rallying. It looked like a cluster rapid. So I just went for it too. I was one of the last to go. And suddenly I'm just running this cluster rapid and I can see the whole river that it's going to drop into some black hole. And, you know, it just happened so quick. Suddenly I was like, I got to see this 90 foot drop. I was falling into what it seemed a total portage. And I just could see a wall in front of me and I was dropping almost a 90 foot drop. Oh, did you see all your boys? No, I just, it just happened so quick. I, was, I wasn't that close to them anyway. And, you know, suddenly you are dropping a 90 foot waterfall and it's not a clean waterfall. There's a wall in front, there's siphons. It's, it's the less clean waterfall in the wall. And, you know, all you could think, it was like, okay, I'm dead. We just fucked up. And suddenly you hit the bottom and it wasn't hard at all. It was really soft. I had a really good line. And I threw my paddle and all. And uh, I just, I was expecting to hit rocks to just die. And I was down there and I was not dead. I rolled up and went backwards of another waterfall. And suddenly I rolled up again and I see my other five friends Shit less scared, so scared. <laughs> and just looking at me, we are in this pool with oh, with a gorge, you know, it's deep gorge and uh, I know the spot you're talking about. I know I know exactly what it looks like. 
So those walls were perfect. No, not a way to climb out or anything. We are just sw- everybody's swimming. Just me and my friend are still in the boat, and the boats have gone down. They are all swimming, cold. My friend Lucky has broken his helmet in two. He's got a concussion. Asking for his girlfriend that he never had, and you know, everybody's fucked up there. And, and we are like, all right, how do we get out of here? And the only way was running another waterfall that it seemed like it landed on a wall as well and just siphon waterfall. It looked terrible. And I was the only one with a paddle and my boat, so I was like, okay, you have to do it. And oh, what a moment! Yeah, it was so scary. So I went for it. And I just broke my hands completely, just cut all my hands so bad against the wall. But, you know, I, I made it out and just grabbed a few ropes and hiked back up so I could throw one rope to them. And one by one, we got out of there. But it, and then we just went to the hospital because my friend had a really bad concussion. Jules was broken shoulder and we were all destroyed, you know, but it, pfft, I don't even know how we survived that one. We just got so lucky because you just don't run a 90 footer blind and get that lucky, you know? No, especially not that one. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, good on you for making that one. Oh, my God. Yeah, bad stories, but I got good stories too. It just. <laughs> well, give me, a good, give, me a good, give me a good story to, to, clo- to, to end our story session with Annie Olsen. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, just. I could tell you good stories of first essence that have gone well. Um, What's your what was your favorite uh, run in California? Oh, it's hard to know. Uh, they are all really good. I really like Royal Gorge. I really like Middle Kings. Was a really good one, you know. Yeah. Uh, Fantasy Falls. Fuck that that California place. That that is insane. So good. <laughs> It is so good. We'll, <laughs> we'll end on we'll end on the glory that is California. With that. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, you know you're an up and coming paddler. You're 17 years old, and you're you're no no 25. No no no. Hang on. I, uh, yeah, let's just picture yourself as a 17 year old paddler. What what advice would you give that person? What 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 advice would you give someone who's aspiring to be like Annie? Uh, I just. I would tell them to have fun, man. I I never went out there a single day to to train or to want to become a pro or sponsor or whatever. I just was having so much fun and spending endless hours in the river, swimming, just kayaking, and you know, get good at it, push it, but always, you know, try to stay safe, like build up, you know, good way. You know, you look at this guy. I used to look at guys like Evan and Raj and. They were so smart, so much smarter than I was. Like when they ran something, they styled it. You know, I wasn't like that. I I would trash myself out there, get injured, and get in too much trouble. But these guys were so smart at it. And these days, I'm way more like them. You know, I just got smarter <laughs> because you get tired of being injured and getting destroyed. But um, I would just tell them to travel, to go have fun with their friends, enjoy this little life we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good advice. That's definitely uh, when I've talked to paddlers and they they ask for advice or what to do. I my the only thing I say is go have fun. Just get with your friends and go have fun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> is uh is, is there anything else you you'd like to share with our huge viewership? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we just finished this uh, awesome trip to Pakistan last month, and uh, we went to do the Indus. And it was the best one yet. I think probably the best trip I've done. And, you know, Pakistan has this really bad image all over the world that it's full of terrorists and bad things happening. But, you know, man, I wasn't, I didn't feel unsafe for a single moment. And just the best, nicest people out there, really happy to have us there. Their their tourism has dropped 95% in the last since 2001 you know so they're struggling and they are really keen for people to go there so if you are a really good kayaker and or even if you are not a good kayaker well not a super good one but there's a lot of class three four rivers out there in front of the Karakorum mountain range it's epic you know and also the Indus just the best big water run I've done like puts the stick into shame pretty much 
not that the stikini is bad or anything it's insanely good but the indus has so many rapids and road access and so much potential to push it and just become big water jetty jedi yeah, I, i've never <laughs> been there but i've seen uh footage and, and pictures of that place and the rapids are just seem on another level yeah it's it's so good man yeah i recommend it to you to everybody well, yeah cool well, I think that about does it for our time here, Annie Ol, and I certainly appreciate you uh, you taking a moment during your recovery and uh, and filling us in on some stories. What's what's next for you? What you heal up? You know, you're going to be probably laid up for a few months, but um, what's uh, yeah. what's on the horizon? Well, when I get over this injury, I'm just going to crack my ass off. I can't wait. It's been hard, you know, from. From having so much kayaking and good times back to, uh, you know, now I cannot even get wet, not even in a swimming pool. So it's uh, pretty depressing just reading books and making plans for next year. I want to do a little bit of USA and go back to Pakistan and do a lot of expeditions in the east, you know, in in Himalayas and all that. I... It was my first time going there and I'm really stoked about it. I think it, it has a lot of potential and... I'm ready for it. Well, so, yeah. heal up. I can't wait to uh, follow <laughs> your adventures and live vicariously through you. And uh, yeah, I certainly appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Can't wait to kayak someday together. Yeah, you have.